Hey guys, and in this video covering OCR A2 Psychology, we're going to talk about restorative justice. Obviously, this is for the for forensic psychology option in the options in the applied psychology paper. Now, um, be, be, before we get into that, let's talk about a bit of background on what restor restorative justice is. We we, we keep we we keep trying to find ways to, to stop offenders from reoffending, and at the moment we're not being very successful. Um, the, the, if you've seen in the news recently, one of the things that in school was the the, the recidivism rate. So that's the, the the number of offenders getting reconvicted after they left prison is about fifty two percent in this country, between fifty two and fifty four percent. So by by both of those counts, over half of offenders who who go into prison and come out in the US and the UK have um re, re offend in in Norway in a prison called Hell Halden, which if you look it up on on, on the internet, it, it's a really really nice prison. The recidivism rate is twenty percent, so. So clearly, our get tough on crime attitude isn't really working, and you have to decide um, whether whether crime, whether prison is a, a vehicle a vehicle for punishment or a vehicle for rehabilitation. And one of the attempts at helping to re rehabilitate both the victim of an offence and and the offender is. Uh, restorative justice. Now, let's talk a little bit about what restorative justice is. Restorative justice is basically the the the, the core of the idea is that the offender can explain to the to the victim or to the victim's family wh wh why why they did it, and they can apologise and explain the rationale for it, so so that the victims can get get closure on on what happened. Uh, people who Engage on restorative justice. It's often helpful, helpful when they come up for parole. But uh, it's not, it's not very prevalent in um, our, our prisons because mo mo most people in sort of what West Western cultures seem to be of the belief that prison isn't for rehabilitation. It's for keeping people safe and punishing offenders. So. Uh, um, restorative justice isn't a very common thing, but we're gonna we're gonna basically we're gonna talk about when it when it does work and when it doesn't work. So uh, there were there was several types of restorative justice. Pro probably the most common doesn't involve the the offender talking talking to the vic the victim family, but the, the the one of the most common is victim impact statements that are. That are read out in in trials, in, in the in the in the absence of the victim being there, and um, it gives it gives the victims the opportunity to explain at, at the offender's trial how it has affected the, the victim if it's a if it's a non, uh, not a murder or 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 the, or the victim's family if the if the victim is no longer there. Um, Uh, the the main other other type of restorative justice, like I said, is um is at is uh, allowing the offenders to talk to the victims, and the, there were, there were, there's an interesting clip of that as part of uh, uh, um the the uh, America's Toughest Prisons television program. If you look at the um, the episode covering Lebanon Correctional Facility, it's a close to to prison, so it's one step away from maximum. They have a, a restorative justice program, and they uh, they show you one of the one of the gang leaders or one of the senior crit members in the facility 
engaging in some restorative justice with the, 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 vict the victims of his crime. And it, it does appear, at least in a small clip, t to work. But we're going to talk in this study about when it works and when it doesn't. Um, uh, so, uh, that's pretty much the background on restorative justice. Now let's talk about the study. So, um, Sh Sh Sherman and Strine, 2007. It's it's evident from reading our research report, which is which is freely available on our academic website. So I'll put a link to it in the description. It's not it's it's not like other um papers that have anything more graphic than that, and it's freely available. So I'll be sure to put a link in the description. But just from reading our paper. It's obvious that they're, they're clear advocates of restorative justice, but only only in certain situations. So obviously, their aim was to 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 look at restorative justice in practice and measure its effectiveness in terms of reoffending. So does it actually stop reoffending? Remember, we talked about that probation one, May May and May 1997, and they found that in the Three, three hundred, three thousand two hundred ninety-nine offenders across England and Wales that they selected from the twenty-two probation officers that they did the uh, probation survey with. That they found that although eight eighty percent of people said probation was useful, eighty-eight percent of people said probation was useful, uh, only thirty-seven percent said it would stop them from reoffending. And at the end, the end of the study, a, a third of them had gone on to reoffend. So that would suggest that although a probation is effective in some ways, it doesn't actually reduce reoffending, and that should be the main goal of it. So when we're talking, about, yeah, it, that's really important with this particular study to test if, if restore to test restorative justice in practice and to measure its effectiveness in terms of reoffending. Um, so the study took the form of a a content analysis. So that's that was where you take several research reports or several reports on anything in general and that and that's the that's the sample of your data and you come up with ways ways to categorize it and um Ex, ex, extrapolate findings from that. It was a um, content analysis of four hundred four hundred twenty-four scientific papers related related to restorative justice. Um, but in the end, thirty-six of thirty-six studies out of those four hundred twenty-four papers were used because uh, the, the they're the ones that had a um, restorative justice group and a non-restorative justice group in, a, in the same place so um, the, the, they, they could be objectively compared so for 424 research reports were analysed but uh, um, 36 studies ended up being used so what, what, what were the results I, I kept banging on about how restorative justice only works in certain circumstances. So what's, what circumstances does it work in? Well, it works in very personal, violent and and property crime. Crimes that have a very personal impact because if someone steals something that's precious to you or hits you in the face, then you probably have a more personal re re relationship with them. Oh, oh personal um, resentment towards them then if you um, say for example you were the, you were the victim of a, of a fraud so restorative justice is is most effective uh, and well, well, when the when there is a, a, a profound effect 
victim than the victim for so like I said but um, violence and property crime however it does say like I use with the fraud example uh, and restorative justice it is not effective in all cases if the offender is going to talk to the to the participants the, the they they have to they have to be willing and obviously they have to be genuine otherwise the, the victims are I'm gonna observe it and if you look at it from a victim's point of view, even if you are genuinely reason ready to accept the, the offender's reasons, me, meeting someone who, who killed uh, uh, you your son, which was the example that I used from Le Le Lebanon prison, you might um when you get there, and when in, when you see him, you might be um, less inclined to listen. What he is? It's sixteen to, hours to say when you actually get there. So it's what it's saying is it's effective in a lot of violence and property crime cases, but certain, certainly not generalizable to all. And um, and even they acknowledge that the 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 the, the, the clearest benefits are actually for the victim, not not the offender. It says here it can be used for reducing post traumatic stress disorder and help help them to to gain closure about what happened and help them to know that the person was sorry so that they can move on with their lives and stop resenting and because it it re re reconviction rates were slightly reduced as well because if, if you know the personal impact that your crimes are having, and it's not just a way to get money or a, 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 a way to get drugs, if you know the per that your crimes have a personal impact and you've seen the effect of that, then you're you're, you're less likely to commit an offence. And they did actually indeed find that comparing the experimental groups who did engage in restorative justice with the control groups who didn't. That's why they, they picked those 36 studies because they had a restorative justice group and a um, control group. So they concluded that, that there, is, there is strong evidence for the increased use of restorative justice because, uh, uh, like, like I said earlier, it's, it's, it's not used in many places and it's, it's definitely the exception to the rule. So there's... Um, Strong evidence for the increased use, especially especially in in schools and in um, youth youth offending programs with with first time offenders. Because obviously, if you're a first time offender and you're uh, still remorseful, and then you talk to the victim's family of the the victim that you perpetrated a crime against, that is gonna if you're a first time offender, you might be more amenable to changing as a result of that than, than if you're a hardened criminal. That goes back to, again, both parties have to be willing to engage in um, the, the, the research. So, um, let's, let's, let's talk about some evaluation points now. The, the, the first one that I had in mind is usefulness it's a highly useful piece of research because it, it, even though even if there is things like social desirability and um, issues with just reliability in general um, it, it's it's that thing where because we're trying to, so hard to reform the prison system and think of a way that works it's it's that you can't argue with the results scenario, and if we if we know that there only works certain types of offender of offences, then we're we're only gonna we're only gonna spend our time and our money because unfortunately the world today is driven by money. Obviously, we're only gonna spend time and money on the um, types of offences and offenders works like to work. So in my mind, in in spite of the sort of lack of scientific rigor, some of this stuff, um, so high level of usefulness, and to me that's the main, the main strength of this research. Um, 
st strength strength two is ethics because the 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 data the data was already there and it uh, they were using a sample of pre pre existing papers to to do to do to do the to do the study they didn't they didn't have to engage in uh, get an informed consent uh, and they they didn't they didn't harm harm any of the participants because they were just analysing pre existing material they didn't actually do um is where uh, in terms of um in in terms of sort of usefulness and uh, uh use usefulness and ethics there's a uh Two key strengths. Uh, uh, two, two downfalls are uh, re reliability and objectivity, and possible demand characteristics. Because if if you think the um, do engaging in some restorative justice is going to help you a uh, parole, which you do in some cases, you, you might be, you might be more inclined to make out that restorative justice has in, improved your perspective and make made you a less dangerous individual if you think it's going to help you get out. So you've got some de demand characterist characteristics issue there. Um, but anyways, that's, that's Sherman and Strang, 2007, uh, um, reviewing research and restorative justice. Um, thanks for watching the video, guys. I'll I'll put the link to the to the PDF covering uh, the information about this study in the in the in the description because it's it's really interesting. I initially got the PDF to uh, give you some statistics on the quantifiable changes that had that had occurred. Um, but but it's 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 too much to too much. To Covering this video because there's there's so much in, information packed into um, that there, there there's all there's also in that paper uh, um, it, it outlines where all where where all the studies were conducted and and who by so that that if if you want any more information on on a specific study that was inc included in this review, start with this paper and you, you can find more information from there. So, thanks for watching this video, guys. Sherman and Strang, Bish 2007. Be sure to visit my website, tomdashroger.com. It's, it's uh, down below. Uh, and for more interesting content, I'm going to be doing a revamp over there soon. And just stay tuned for more interesting content in general. Subscribe if you like this video. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Bye, guys.